So what, what I've been up to is I've been trying a, um, a single lens, a single prime lens test. So I've been using just the Olympus 17mm um, just to kind of discipline myself, get myself back to just focusing on one focal length. Um, and I think um, it's just good to do this occasionally, just to kind of reset your boundaries so that you're seeing just, you know, just in one field of um, one field of view in your mind. So it's I think it makes it easier to visualise um, what you're working with. So I decided to do a test with just that lens and the camera I picked to do most of this test is this one which um, you know I think I've talked about before which is the Olympus EPL8 um, it's pretty small as you can see you know I've got small hands but even for me this is a this is a pretty tiny camera um, and that's you know that that's one I would list that as definitely one of the the positives one of the pros to this camera another is that um it does an awful lot you know it, it packs a lot of features in here i think it's kind of the functionality is pretty similar to the em10 mark ii i think maybe um probably um so yeah it, it's uh it's got um you know ibis not the best of the Olympus IBIS. I think it's kind of one step down from the five axis IBIS that the EM1 has. Um, it does have the tilt screen, which is obviously very handy for street type things. And also this screen is, it's one of those, so as it comes right down, so that when you want to do vloggy stuff on it, you can not only um, see yourself obviously but you can control the video as well from there so you can stop it and start it and all that sort of stuff from from the screen it flips the whole image upside down for you once it's fully round so that's very good um it does reasonable video 1080p hd so it does reasonable kind of video it looks good video looks good coming out of it although i always use the if i'm using it in color i use the muted um color profile because I don't I don't like I think even the natural is a bit kind of too colorful for me um, obviously it doesn't have an EVF but it does have this um, little accessory EVF which I, I use it sometimes and when you're out and about it is you know that's a really easy plug-in but it obviously makes the camera that much bigger and bulkier and there's always a risk of it dropping off I suppose um, and one of the other great benefits of this camera, particularly in white like this, I'm not a fan of white cameras, I have to say, particularly, but you don't look too much like a serious photographer with a um, kind of, you know, a white camera. It looks a bit touristy at best, I suppose. Um, so those, I think they're all positives. I think there are a couple of negatives to this camera. Um, it doesn't have a mic input as you might expect on a camera of this kind of design, um, which is a nuisance because you have to rec always record your audio separately. Um, the accessory EVF, it would be better if it was, um, you know, an integrated EVF. So that's, you know, it's not, not perfect. And it's not weather sealed either, which up until yesterday when I went out in Guildford, up until then it had been fine, but yesterday was wet. So we'll come on to that in a little while. One, the other thing, the other thing I've been trying out on here is the um, monochrome, an, an adjusted monochrome profile for, and I've been using it as just JPEG. So I've been, I usually, uh, I'm usually a raw only photographer and I edit everything that I want to keep. Um, however, I decided to try some of the monochrome profile in this with a bit of a tweak so it's I'm, what I'm using is monochrome plus two on contrast with a yellow filter and I have to say I've been really really surprised just how good the results are 
I would say that of the images I've taken, and I've taken JPEG plus RAW, um, so that I had some backup, but probably 95% of the images that I've taken, I was happy with straight as JPEGs. Um, so I'll go through a few of those. And I think there were some obvious situations where I knew at the time I was taking the photo that I would want the raw as well. And mainly that's because there were a couple of scenes where there was where the colour really really kind of made the, the image, I think. And you know, black and white wasn't wasn't gonna work in the same way. So there were a couple of, of shots where I knew that I wanted the raw. So I'm glad that I did the um raw plus JPEG. However, you know, I'm not sure that I'll keep the raw files for all of those images because there are so many of them where I'm, you know, they're, they're not things that are, you know, they're not going to end up in exhibitions or anything like that. It's nothing too serious. So I, I don't feel as though I'd be missing anything by removing some of the raw files from the drive now that I've got the JPEGs. There are some which I'll definitely keep, um, both sets of files, but I've been really surprised just how good they are. Now things, as I say, things were working out I thought quite well until yesterday when we had a very a pretty wet day um, so back in Guildford and instead of taking the EPL8 I took the same kind of setup I took the 35 uh, 35 mil equivalent 17 mil lens but put it on the EM1 Mark II and used that and to be honest was there that much difference um, can't say as you can see the difference in the images to be honest it could be either camera um, in terms of handling um, in some respects the EM1 Mark II is, is easier to carry because it's you know it's got the grip obviously I can't show you it on on, um, on this video because it's it's video in this but it's got the good grip you know for carrying um, do feel a bit more conspic I feel a bit more conspicuous with the bigger camera and it looks a lot more serious so I, I you know I'm a little bit I feel a little bit different about the photography but not excessively so it's still not a big camera by any means still quite small um I was going to use I, I set up the same um film kind of profile um so that I get a pretty direct comparison between the um EM1 Mark II and the EPL8 um, and as I say, I can't really tell the difference between the images on the com when I look at them on the computer. Um, I've also got a different. I've got another film profile on the EM1 Mark II, where what I've done is I've adjusted the curve as well, which you can do. Um, so that's a, a bit more kind of um, highlight and shadow adjustment have taken place there. And I've not tried that out yet. I will do, but I didn't get didn't really feel as though I had a good opportunity yesterday. Um, so that's, uh, that's still to come. Um, one difference, one of the major, one of the major differences in the handling is that when, on, on the M1 Mark II, when you want to switch between a kind of um, custom modes, they're on the top dial. You've got a C1, C2 and C3 on the top dial. Whereas on the EPL8, here you haven't got the same thing you haven't got that it's not on the dial you've got to go into the menu and use the um, my set functions in the menu which is okay um, it's just not as good as having it on the top dial but it's all right you get used to it it's fine so let's look at some images
so in conclusion what do I think about the uh, the JPEG versus RAW um, test well I think that in many instances more than happy with the JPEGs um, and in some instances as I think I've shown there I would still want to do a bit of an edit so it's kind of yeah I need both but often I am quite happy with the JPEG so I'm going to continue to shoot RAW plus JPEG with kind of uh, some of these um, tailored film profiles slightly tweaked film profiles and um, over time we'll see how that goes because um, yeah I think it's it certainly gives you something to look at immediately and if, even if you're not even if you're then going to go on to edit the raw just being able to look at the JPEG immediately and seeing what potential you've got there I think can be more useful than just looking at um, the raw itself and you know what, what does it cost you to do both um, nothing really you don't even have to keep both if you don't want to but I think I think it's a valuable thing for the time being for me and also I'm going to try some of the I'll, I'll try it with some other cameras I think as well um, not tried anything like this that I can recall probably have forgetful um, prob I don't think I've tried too much like it on the Lumix cameras so today filming on the G6 um, and photographing on the G6 and we'll um, possibly give that a try as well and see how we get on so um, that might be in a future episode <laughs>